I want to ask the question, do men really have nothing to say or are we just not listening to them? We have grown our boys up for two or three generations now where everything or largely uh, the focus is on girls and women, their needs, their vulnerabilities, their safety. Not to grow our boys up, that they are so in tune with what women and girls need, they have no idea of their own needs and how to deliver that. Children adopt Western customs very, very quickly, right? I'm amazed as to how quickly they have mobile phones. I'm amazed how quickly they're on Facebook, etc., etc. And I know in some of those statistics for some of those students, they were in camps a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, where there was nothing. You know, there was a the base level of survival. In Fairfield, we have 130 services for women and children. We have three or four for men. And then she grabbed the glass and glassed me in front of the children because the glass was right there. And I got cut up all across here. Um, and as soon as that happened, I let go. I just grabbed the kids and I grabbed them both and they were terrified. What I found was we had men who were being poisoned, who were having grass, glass ground up and put in their food, um, furniture smashed waiting till they're asleep at night and then attacking them with all sorts of objects. There's a lot of great men, there's a lot of great fathers out there that love their kids and there's a lot of angry women that are flying under the radar with bad tempers that don't get addressed. Um, that they, it's, it's a cop out, it's too easy for women to say he's the one, he's the one. And I had a biopsy and the specialist rang me on a Tuesday night and he said, you got prostate cancer. Men wouldn't complain of pain. They had to go to work regardless because if they didn't go to work, you know, you couldn't claim a sickie or, you know, there was all these pressures on um, the breadwinner of the house.